Beloved in the Lord, welcome to yet another wonderful session. This is your program. I program the people with the word, broadcasting live from EPN Studio. And as you always have me here, Chris Coffey, as your uncle man for this program. By me, you see fine two gentlemen burning for Jesus. And uh, they will go straight away to introduce themselves because I get to remind you, viewers, this is a very special edition of the people with the word. I always start to my left hand with my uncle man, Brother D. Benoit Atwood. Brother D. Benoit Atwood, how do you feel to be to this session? Uh, right, Chris, I'm excited. Okay. I'm happy to be once more in the midst of my brothers and sisters mm -hmm. for this awesome program. So it's it's a pleasure to be here today. The People with the Word, a very wonderful program it is. So school our viewers what People with the Word is all about. Yes, as we always say, the People with the Word is this end time program, an inspiration of uh, the more health girl, high God through our seven in the Lord, Reverend Dr. Mobile Emmanuel, to bring forth the, the way out to his people in times like this. Remember, the times we live are perilous times. To, to map the way out for us to live in a way that will enable us to make heaven and last. So the people of the world is, is this program that brings about the word of God, that the message that we mostly receive on Sundays and on weekly services for us to go deeper into the world, for us to share our views, our ideas, our understanding with our brothers and sisters in order for us to go deeper into the things of Christ and to make heaven and last. Not a very familiar face you have by my right side. So, of course, brother, I would like you to introduce yourself to our viewers, tell them your caliber, and of course, how you feel to be part of today's session. Uh, thank you so much, brother Chris. By the grace of God, I'm Pastor Remy. By his grace, I'm here this evening to also be a partaker of the people with the word. I mean, it has been a wonderful program. I've also been watching, and by the grace of God today, I'm a part of it, which I'm grateful. Thank you. Well, we cannot just help but say thank you so much for at least taking our time out of your busy schedule to be here today. Okay. And I pray that whatever it is God has in store for the viewers out there through you, you will be able to achieve it. Okay. But dear viewers, before I get to announce to you our topic for the day, it's just but no more, we invite the Holy Spirit to be here in our midst. We pray in Jesus' name. My everlasting Father in heaven, I do thank you for another wonderful session you've made possible for your children to receive your word again through us. Father, we begin to hand over ourselves first before you as vessels that may you use to impact your children in the name of Jesus. And whatsoever it is you have in store for your children in this session, may they receive it full time with no obstacles. Come and have the glory. Take the stage in everything we do here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, viewers, I implore you to hit the like, hit the share, hit the subscribe button. This is the people with the word. Make sure that the buttons know no peace, as our Father will always tell you to do. Make sure that every person in your family is connected. Make sure that all your contacts, all your friends are actually connected to this wonderful program. We have a very touching, striking topic to touch today, which is going to impact not just you, but every person who is going to be anchored through you. We are locked into Facebook, YouTube, and of course, you can give to us your own comments, your own contributions as per what we are discussing here on set. So, going down to our topic of the day, which is keep the fire burning. But before talking about that, it's just by normal, but I did we have a recap as per what we actually discussed the last, last time on session. Are you launching deep? into Jesus or into Satan, but I did what have you to say about exactly. that? Exactly. Another Victory, question yes. I will ask is, are you a positive, deeper launcher mm. or not? Are you the one who obtains victory by being a positive, deeper launcher into Christ or not? You know, our previous sessions, we had a series of uh, awesome, amazing program mm -hmm. that taught us about the depth of Jesus Christ that and where it. we should launch deep. We should launch deep into the we should launch into the deep of Jesus Christ and not that of Satan. Yes. And we have to see some of the things that will make you to identify yourself as that one that launches into the deep of Satan mm -hmm. rather than that one who launches into the deep of Jesus Christ. Yes. And during the last session we hammered on the point that there is victory only for those who launch deeper into Jesus. If you're the one who remains at the shallow, I tell you, you'll be in just for the shallow things. You'll naturally experience God in all his forms, but if you dig deep to know more about this Jesus, then you're in for victory. You're in for success. You're in for everything the Lord has in store for you. Well, we're talking about launching deep, and of course, I just want to affiliate it to this particular session we are having, which, uh, which, uh, which is the Easter period. The Easter period is a time wherein Christians had to launch deeper into prayer into fastings into retreats this is the time wherein children of god actually had to launch deep into jesus exactly. and because of that they gained what they call fire exactly. because of those particular instances because of those intentional acts there was something ignited in them exactly. and i just believe it's because of that which the lord actually had to inspire his servant to
to bring forth the message of keep the fire burning. Exactly. Keep the fire burning, viewers, is what we have to discuss here on set today. You have to keep that fire burning. The fire you gained from praying and fasting, the fire you got through this Lenten period, the fire you got by uh, uh, through launching deeper into the things of Jesus, you need to keep that fire burning. It's an instruction. It's a principle. It's a precept you need to keep as a Christian so that you make heaven at last, so that you finish well like Apostle Paul did. And our uh, uh, mama in the house was the one who actually had to bring forth this message. God bless you so much, mom. And viewers, I tell you, if you're just logging in, this is a people with the word, you and I discussing the word of God here today. And whatever it is we're discussing here today, we want you to give to us your own contributions, your own take. By me, you have Pastor Remy and my uncle, my brother, D. Benoit attitude here to school you about the good news of how to keep the fire burning. Our mother in the house told us about a certain excitement, brother yes. D. Benoit. A feeling of excitement when you go to do the things of God. That what the, that what she, that how she used to define or bring to us the understanding of that fire. Exactly. Because when we ask ourselves, what is this fire we're talking about? Is it the physical fire we have in our gas, our fire side? No, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the fire that comes from within. That excitement, that burning desire to plunge deeper and deeper into the things of Jesus. And she brought to us the encounter of Moses in the book of Exodus, Exodus 19, but I did Benoit, where in, in the Mount Sina, he actually experienced the burning bush. He actually experienced a nature of God, which was that that came in the figure of fire. So, dear viewers out there, there is this fire you need to maintain. There is this fire you need to keep. But deeper into that, I would like to ask um, uh, Pastor Remy. When we talk about the burning fire, we talk about keeping the fire alive. What can you tell our viewers about this fire? Well, I think uh, talking about this fire, like the mother in the house explained yesterday. You know, she says it's like there's this excitement. I think another word we'll use is there's this influence within you. Influence. You know, in the book of Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible says when Jesus, after he had been baptized, he says he was led to the wilderness. Now, when you read out the old King James Version, it says he was driven. Now, this is this influence within him, a supernatural power that is in him that will drive him. It is, it is like an influence. It, it keeps stirring you from within to go into the deep. Go into the... So he was led by the Spirit. This is the fire in him to go into the wilderness. Mm. So... Pastor Remy is saying it is that influence, that pushing force that pushes you to launch deeper and deeper into Jesus. Are you the one who feels us to pray? Are you the one who feels us to fast? Are you the one who feels us to read the word of God? That means you're being pushed, you're being influenced by a particular force to do whatever it is you have to do. Pastor Remy, in that light, I get to also say that there, there can also be negative influence when we talk about influence. Because when we talk about launching deeper into Jesus, launching deeper into Satan, that means there can also be a negative influence what can you say about that yeah actually you know in this world there are actually two forces leading in this world you have the force of god which is the holy spirit and the force of the devil mm -hmm. now when we talk of the influence of god we should as well be notified that there is this influence of the world yes. so like of the people of the world therefore those who are not yet believers they are not yet born again they are also being influenced by the the devil mm -hmm. and this influence drive that we can see a driving force within them you'll be surprised that on a sunday early morning you'll be see people in bars you'll see people sitting in in front of nightclubs what is happening there was an influence in the night that took them to the nightclub to the bars so therefore they are also being influenced these are negative forces Pushing them to do all sorts of things. So likewise, as we have the influence of the Holy Spirit, there is also the influence of the devil. Hmm. Likewise, as we have the influence of the Holy Spirit, we also have the influence of the devil. That means right deep, even in the spirit realm, which is a very vast realm, the devil can still be there. Exactly. That, that's why you see many persons have tremendous encounters, visions, but it's not from God. Exactly. The devil himself comes to talk to the children of God. You know, the devil can exploit that your burning desire or wanting to get deeper into the things of the spirit. And of course, he appears to you like light me why he is not the light mm -hmm. so that means it's an extra call for us to be very vigilant and be sure with the kind of encounters that we have in the spirit realm but i think we're not talking about keeping the fire alive keeping the fire burning mm -hmm. so what do you have to say concerning the aspect of fire yes it is important as uh, uh pastor Remy, as earlier said with this burning desire, mm -hmm. this drive to want to do the things of God. Indeed. For us children of God, we are emphasizing on the burning fire, the desire of Jesus. The keeping the fire burning, that is the fire towards doing the things of God. Yes. It is important that 
everyone will always have a drive towards doing something. Mm -hmm. But the end result of what you do is going to determine if it's that drive is for uh, the things of God, God or the things for Satan. For of Satan. So yes. keeping the fire burning is we are encouraging us, you and I, our brothers and sisters, to always keep that desire to, 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 to want to do the things of God. Mm. We should not allow it to quench. We should not allow it to die, die down. Whatever we have to do, as we go deeper, we're going to see some of the steps for us to maintain this fire burning. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I believe, trust God that everyone is going to be blessed. So then the next question is, who is supposed to keep this fire? Pastor Remy, you get to see that many persons today in the church think that some particular level to get um, um, closer to God is for some particular persons. That means um, if somebody is to engage in some level of prayer, it should be based on your calling. Somebody is supposed to, um, uh, let me say, know God, the more is based on a particular, it's for some particular categories of persons. So what do you have to say about this? Well, I want to say this. This fire we are talking about here, it's not necessarily for only pastors or maybe apostles or the, the set called fivefold ministry. No. This fire, it's actually for all the children of God. This fire actually, how does it come about? It comes from the Holy Spirit. You know, in the book of John, John chapter 3, when uh, John the Baptist was baptizing, you can see that even in Matthew chapter 3, he said something. He says, I, John the Baptist, I baptize you with water, but one cometh after me, that he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. And you see in John chapter 1 verse 12, it says to as many that receive him, to them he gave them power to become. This power we are talking about here is that fire. Mm -hmm. So he didn't say to apostles, he didn't say to prophets, he says to them that receive. So anyone who has received Jesus, every believer ought to carry this fire, not just for the fivefold ministry. Mm -hmm. Everyone who has received Jesus is now entitled to carry this fire, Brother yeah. Benoit. Oh, yes. Yes, I have anything to add. Yes, it's very important for us to know because, as we said earlier, we always think that it is meant for the pastor to carry the fire. Mm. It is meant for this alone to carry the fire. But importantly, we are with the, the, the Holy Spirit is making us to understand that everyone who has surrendered, mm. everyone who has handed his or her life to Jesus, is that one who is supposed to carry this fire. Mm -hmm. And importantly, when you can your life, when you have this burning desire, there is a role to play because you need to maintain it. And we are here to remind us all that we need to keep this fire burning. Mm -hmm. it's, it doesn't suffice for you to receive the fire, but you have to keep the fire burning. Yes, you have to keep the fire burning. And as per the topic, keep the fire burning, Pastor Remy, I see it as an instruction. That means there's, a, there's, there's, this, there's a, a conscious effort which Christians have to make in order to maintain the fire they have in them. Yeah. Yes, that means as a Christian, you need to be sure that you are moving in this particular direction. Not only really sure, but very conscious about your surrounding, very conscious about atmosphere, very conscious and vigilant about everything around you. Do you have anything to say about a particular concept? Yeah, actually, you know, as a Christian, after receiving Christ, which means you've received the fire, mm. you have a role to play. You know, it's just like, uh, you know, the three days fire side. Okay. You know, once you put on the fire, once you bring the wood together and you put on the fire, mm. you have a role to play. You see, when our parents used to cook in those days, yes. they would tell you from time to time, go and check the fire if it is on, which means if you don't keep a check, that fire can go off. Mm. And if the fire goes out, then, I'm sorry, the food will not be ready. Exactly. So as a Christian, you yourself have to put yourself on a check to make sure your fire keeps burning. <laughs> You as a Christian have to keep yourself on a check to be sure that your fire is burning. I really like this example in use of the three stone fire side. Oh, yes. That means you have to dare to blow. You have to be there to keep that eye. You have to be there to be sure that the wind does and, not actually and, put um, it takes off your fire. I remember, yes. even what you need to put under, if you get wet wood and you put on that, it's not going to burn. Yeah. You know? So you, even yes. what you have to bring, even what in, doing the check, you have to also make sure what you are using as your checklist mm -hmm. should be that which is going to maintain your fire burning. Very because right. if you take wood that is from water or that is wet and you put under the fire, the, the, the fire side, it's not going to burn. It's not going to burn. Exactly. That is you it. get the best of wood that you're going to put there, it's going to activate the flames to come up the more. <laughs> so it, it is very important. 
So you see, the devil is out there roaming the earth like a roaming lion, looking for that fire to quench. He's there like that wind blowing about, blowing about, and wanting to be sure that children of God is real. So you need to make that conscious effort as a child of God to keep your fire burning. I already like the comments coming in from Sister Helen H. We says, Hallelujah. We bless God for the program. Let us keep the fire of God burning. Let us trust God and maintain our relationship with God. You know, I like that particular point of maintain our relationship with God. So you cannot have fire if you are not of God, if you are not of Christ Jesus, if you don't affiliate yourself with him, Pastor Remy, yeah. you can never have that fire. Exactly. Many persons actually think that, okay, if a man of God just lays hands on me right now, I'll be so burning and operating in the supernatural. Is that really true? Uh, don't be deceived. You don't receive fire through uh, impartation when you have not first received what brings fire. What brings fire is not the impartation or the hands laid on you by the man of God. What brings fire first is receiving Christ Jesus. Therefore, you have to become born again. As Jesus explained to Nicodemus in John 3 verse 3, he says you have to become born again. And what does it mean to be born again? It means you just have to surrender yourself to Christ Jesus. Exactly. You just have to receive him in your life as your Lord and Savior. And by so doing, immediately, that is where you receive the fire. Mm. Yeah. And she continues to say, Sister Helen H. She says, the fire is for everyone who has identified with God. Exactly. As Pastor Remy says, you cannot have the fire unless you have actually received what actually brings forth that fire. So unless you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you cannot burn. You cannot actually exercise your spirit. You cannot actually do the things that God wants you to do. Let's get down to our first video for the day. And afterwards, we are going to come to tell you various steps various stages what is it that you have to put in place to keep your fire burning what are the things you're supposed to do as a Christian to keep your fire burning but before that we're going to listen to the first um, segment we're going to watch our mama actually having to explain to us the concept about keeping your fire burning the concept of keeping fire which actually has to do with everything about a Christian so stay in there hit the like hit the share comment comment and comment give to us your own take as per this particular topic of keeping your fire burning we are living in the last days and unless you have that fire in you you cannot survive these last days we're living in the end time and the devil is so mad super aggressive to make sure he drags a lot onto his kingdom don't be the scapegoat we'll be right back watch and be blessed keep the fire burning keep the fire burning now we have just come through the easter period or the lent period and now the lord has suffered we suffered with him during that period many went through the fasting many went through prayers many went through um deep meditation many launched deeper into the lord many went through um retreats and so on reconciliations and so many other things that they did for the lord and now there is some other thing we have to do praise the lord there is some other thing we have to do remember when he went he didn't say goodbye did he he didn't he didn't say goodbye he said he will still be with us so we should not think that it is all ended. Praise the Lord. It has not ended. It has not ended. We have to keep that fire burning. That fire of sacrifice burning. That fire of prayer burning. That fire of fasting burning. Praise the Lord. We have to keep that fire burning. Let it not quench. Let it not quench, brother. Let it not quench, sister. And you would not have that fire during that period. I pray for you today that from today as you listen to this message, may your fire be ignited in the name of Jesus. Now, when we look at the word fire, what does it mean? We are talking about keep the fire burning. Now we are saying it's a strong feeling of excitement when we go biblical, right? It's a strong, when we, in this context, we are talking about a strong feeling of excitement. A strong feeling of 
excitement. And what can cause that excitement is the word of God, the commands of God. That is what can cause that excitement in you. That excitement that comes from within. You cannot explain what is making you excited, but you just discover that you are excited. You have some joy. You have some peace. You just feel like, I don't know what's ever gone through that kind of situation. When you just feel something burning in you, that you should pray, you should pray, you should pray. And you just say, let me pray. You just feel like, let me read my Bible. That's something burning, something pushing you. That let read your Bible, read your Bible, read your Bible. Fast, 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 fast. Hallelujah. Who has gone through that kind of situation? That is a fire we are talking about. You feel that fire. Praise the Lord. You feel that fire, that burning desire to do something for the Lord. That is a fire we are talking about today. That let that fire. Let that burning desire for the things of the Lord, for the commands of God not quench. Let it keep burning. Let the fasting you were taking through the period of Lent, let it not quench. Fast and fast the more. Launch deeper. Hallelujah. Launch deeper. Desire the things of the, more, of the Lord more and more. Desire to serve him more and more. Desire to want him, to feel him, to hear him, to honor him, to obey his commands more and more. Each day as you rise, desire him more and more. Let the fire keep burning. Now let us look at Exodus chapter 19 verse 18. Now Mount Sinan was completely in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked greatly. Mount Sinia was covered with smoke and filled with fire. Smoke of fire. Hallelujah. What was happening there? This was an experience that Moses had at, on Mount Sinia when he went, when he went to collect uh, the Ten Commandments, when he went to meet the Lord. Hallelujah. To collect the commandments which we are obeying today. Now what happened when he got there. When the word of the Lord. The command of the Lord had to come out. The mountain had to be filled with fire. Therefore the command of God itself is fire. I am saying that. The command of the Lord is the fire we need. Because the word of God itself is fire. When God was releasing his commands to Moses on Mount Sinai, the Bible tells us that in Exodus chapter 19 verse 8, it tells us that the mountain was filled with smoke of fire. So if we say we are born again, if we say we have been redeemed, it means we have the command of God. And the command of God, we are obeying the command of God. And it means that we have the fire of God in us. Somebody say praise the Lord. It means we have the fire of God in us. No doubt the Lord told Joshua in Joshua 1 verse 8. That let this book of the Lord not depart from you. Let this fire not depart from you. Let the word of God not depart from you. Meditate upon it day and night. Let the fire not quench. Let the word of God not quench in you. Meditate upon it day and night because the word of God is fire if you don't meditate upon it day and night you will put off your fire who is supposed to keep the fire burning is it the servant of God is it just pastors is it just elders is it just the workers in the house of God is it just those who have titles in the vineyard of God oh no child of God it is every one that the Lord has created. Like he said in De Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. That obey, if you obey. It did not say if the pastors obey. It did not say if the workers obey. It did not say if I obey. It said if you obey. If we obey the commands of God. Hallelujah. If we obey. We are all called to keep the fire burning. To keep the commands of God. To observe them jealously. Let it burn in our lifestyle. Let it burn in our hearts. 
When the Lord is asking you to keep your fire burning, you are disappointed. You are disappointed about the situations in your life. You are disappointed about the happenings around the world. You are disappointed about the things that are happening in your family, about the things that are happening with your children, about the things that are happening in your marriage, in your job, in anything about your life. You are disappointed in one way or the other. The secret is keep your fire burning. And then you will ask me, how should I keep my fire burning? How should I keep my fire burning? Number one, sacrifice to keep the commands of God. Welcome back, viewers. This is your program, my program, The People With The Word. If you're just tuning in, this is The People With The Word, where you get to find me here in the studio with me. I always have my uncle, man, Brother D. Benoit Atut, and to my right side, Pastor Remy, where we'll get to discuss the Word of God. That is you and us discussing the things about God. And so far into the program, we are already talking about keep the fire burning. Our mama in the house already told us that this fire is that excitement that you feel in you to do the things of God. The excitement that has been ignited in you by a certain encounter that you have from Jesus. And Pastor Remy highlighted very important into this program that you cannot have this fire unless you have the encounter of the source encounter with the source. He gave a very tremendous example, a very wonderful and outstanding example of the three stone fire side, which that means you have to do that conscious effort to keep the fire burning as a Christian. And now we are down onto the point of how can you keep this fire burning? I've well, spoken about the fire and he said this fire is that push, this fire is that influence to actually do the things of God. And mind you viewers, this influence can either be positive or or negative so you must be very conscious to follow these particular steps we are about to give you to be sure that you are on the right path to be sure that you are actually in line with the right influence and the first thing which I'm going to throw to Pastor Remy is the point of actually accepting Jesus being born again Pastor Remy you spoke about a certain source that means you cannot be on fire if you are not plunged or connected to the source and so linking it up to the point of being born again how can being born again actually help you maintain or keep fire you know actually uh, in our world today many people yet still do not understand what it means to be born again to be born again like I earlier explained it's very simple it's for you to open up your heart for Jesus to come in you know in Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 Jesus Christ says I stand at the door of your heart and knock he says, if anyone hears my voice and open, I will come in. That's how you become born again. By opening up your heart for Jesus to come in and be your Lord and Savior. And if Jesus comes into your heart, immediately you have gotten contact of this fire we are talking about. Mm. Many people go to church, but yet they are not born again. Many people go to church on Sunday, they are not yet born. Uh, believers they've not received Christ Jesus and so because they go to church maybe they give offerings they pay tithes so they feel like they ought to like they have the right no unless that's why John 1 12 says to as many that receive him not as many that goes to church you can even receive him even not on Sunday on Monday in your house when maybe someone preaches to you mm -hmm. so you can contact this fire only by receiving Christ Jesus not even by going to church. So once you've received Christ Jesus, you have contact this fire. Now you need the church to help you keep the fire burning. Mm -hmm. Let me just to add to what he's saying. That means when you receive Jesus, you actually receive his nature. You actually receive his person. That means whatever it is Jesus has, you have it. I think they tell us that we are gods. We are little gods here on earth. Oh, yes. And of course, we are the reflection of the Father. And whatever it is the Son has, that means he takes it from the Father. Let so if yes, he created man image and likeness, likeness. Exactly. in his image and likeness that means we are talking about a god of fire a consuming fire which he is so that means if you want to actually contain maintain in and jesus. burn you in jesus to you need to first of all receive, receive him you need to be again. born you need to again you need to actually hand over, over your spirit your soul you everything you surrender we to we encourage him. you to hit the like share and comment Give to us your own take as per what we are discussing here on set. We are talking about keep the fire burning. And we are down onto the point of what should you do? What can you do? How can you go about maintaining a fire? The fire which you have received.
receive remember we are just uh, living the easter fever and with that there is this engagement that we took with god is it in prayers is it in fasting is it in retreats everything everything we did in order to draw nearer to jesus give to us setting fire and of course this program is coming to you to remind you that you need to keep that fire pastor remy said it's just like the fire side the wisdom fire side if you don't tend to it if you don't look into it if you pay less attention to it it's going to be gone you lose it and the devil is roaming around looking for who to devour looking for that fire to consume and mind you if the devil succeeds to quench your fire oh you're gone there is nothing that can be done again for you. That means he's going to come into your family and do a lot of mishaps, do a lot of um, calamities. Exactly. But I think Benoit, praying without season is... Exactly, yes. It's another way to keep the fire burning. Remember, mm -hmm. uh, uh, as Pastor Remia said, for us to have a, get in, in, in touch with that fire, for us to, uh, to encounter that fire, for us to first of all receive the fire, we need to encounter the, the man that carries the fire. Yes. We need to surrender our life to Jesus. And now what is prayer? Prayer is just a communication with Jesus. Mm -hmm. It is that bridge that links us with the Father. So if you receive Jesus Christ and you don't keep communication with Jesus Christ, you're going to lose him. Mm -hmm. You're going to your fire is going to die down. So this prayer is like the firewood that you put under the three stone fire to, to yes. ignite to activate the fire again. Mm -hmm. So it is important for you, child of God, who has given your life to Christ to be in an attitude of prayer. Remember, the Bible tells us that we should pray without ceasing. Yes, it is not for nothing, it is because for us to maintain the fire burning, the fire that we have received is through prayers, continuous prayers to our Father. We and we maintain this flame from burning. Mm. You see, God our Father told us that why men slept that is when the wicked one came to devour, to take, to steal, to destroy, to kill, and do all of his calamities. That means you have to inculcate in you that spirit of prayer you need to be that prayer warrior uh, pastor remy i see you vibrating so much i think there's uh, something you need to add about this aspect of keeping and maintaining a healthy prayer life as a christian uh, yeah actually as a christian you know prayer is one thing you cannot do without hmm. there is no way you call yourself a christian and you don't pray you know jesus christ is god as well hmm. now look at jesus being god coming on earth he stay on earth the very next thing we saw immediately after his baptism was moving straight into the wilderness 40 days and night of prayer. And after that, when you look at Mark 1 35, the Bible says, Early in the morning, long while before dawn, Jesus was up the mountain doing what? He was praying, like uh, Brother Benoit said. You know, Jesus knew that even though God being God, but so long as He has put on this flesh, He knew He had to stay in constant communication. As Brother Benoit said, that prayer is just communication prayer is not a mystery it's communication it is in the communication that mysteries happen so as you keep contact through prayer then mysteries begin to happen more of the fire of god as god says he is a consuming fire in romans 12 uh, hebrews 12 29 yes. so you see as you talk to fire in in first corinthians uh, in first corinthians 3 it says as we behold like in a mirror we are being transformed what you look upon you become that thing so as you talk to fire you become fire mm. as you talk to fire in prayer you become fire so as a christian it is obvious that you can't do without prayer. Yes. Prayer should be your breakfast, your lunch, your supper, your dinner. Prayer should be your lunch, your dinner, your supper, your dinner. And then that means that I, I get to understand the psalmist who say he who dwells in the sacred place of the Most High. Yes. Pastor, remember, I believe the sacred place of the Most High is that place of prayer. That is, that is when um, um, there is divine encounter, there is divine visitation. I mean, there are even times wherein you get to pray and you say you feel you are no longer here on earth. Yeah. There's, a, there's, a, there's a particular stage where when you get in prayer, you know fully whether ah, I'm off this earth. You exactly. feel the presence of God. Exactly. You feel that fire, you feel that heat, you feel that vibration, you feel that sensation of a particular presence. Yeah. And the only way you can entertain that presence is if you continue digging deep, digging deep, digging deep. Just like the, 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 the apostles of Jesus Christ, just like his followers. You see, they got to a time wherein when they prayed, they had an encounter. Yes. They prayed, I think they, 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 the time of Pentecost, but I did Benoit. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Remember, the, 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 the Lord had told them to remain together in prayer. Yes. At the time of Pentecost, we all know what was happening. Mm -hmm. They were together in fervent prayer. Yes. And we all know what happened. Mm -hmm. And you see, actually, uh, even uh, before uh, Jesus had to go to the cross, mm -hmm. actually, Jesus took them up the mountain. 
and that was where we had the transfiguration. They were there with Christ in prayer, and it was in prayer they had, they had the experience of the transfiguration where Elijah and Moses had to appear before them. So assuming they were not in prayer, they would have never seen that. Yes. You see, sometimes when we even talk and quote scriptures and quote what happens in the Bible, some Christians feel like, you, you know, it's the Bible is not for us. No, even us today. I remember one time in Yawunde, I was praying in the church. Today I was sharing this story with my brother, uh, brother Benoit. I was praying in my pastor's office, and while praying, at a certain point till 4 a.m., it was an all-night prayer, just me and one of my brothers. At a certain point while praying, it was 4, we were about closing, and I told him, I said, can you just pray for us to close? And I just closed my eyes. While he was praying, I saw a hand stretch forth before me. I didn't see anybody. It was just a hand stretch forth and greeting me. In my mind, I thought it was my brother who was greeting me, who I asked to pray. So I also lifted up my hand to shake this hand. But... Before I knew it, my hand had to pass, and when I opened my eyes, I realized, no, my brother who was praying was on the floor, seated, praying, and I was like, so who was greeting me? And I had to ask him, did you greet me? I was like, look at where the distance, I can't be greeting you, and immediately I understood, I had an encounter. So encounters are actually real, it is for us all Christians, but it is mostly in the place of prayer you can have such an encounter. <laughs> exactly. Men ought to pray and not to faint. You see, if our Father Jesus is teaching us this, that means he knows fully whether the only way you can maintain that touch of fire is only in the secret place. That means it's where you actually cook yourself in prayer, you build that spiritual stamina. That is where you can actually get to express and experience the Holy Ghost. I see I'm a sister Vera Kimi saying hallelujah, glory to God. Brother Emil Dussel says, why men slept? Brother Chris, we need to be alert indeed. And Ivana Lydia says, praise God. Thank you all so much for being part of this program. Give to us your own contributions. Give to us your own reactions. Tell us what you think about this particular prayer, the particular talking point we are discussing. Here. You see, prayer is the master key. Oh, yes. That means Jesus Christ started with prayer and ended with prayer. That means that's an example we need to emulate. Exactly. You cannot be a Christian who is, who is void and dry of a prayer life, Pastor Remy. I mean, the not. devil make mess of you. The not devil, not. like the, the songwriter Ibuka says, if I don't pray, Satan will make mess of me. <laughs> oh, you God. know, it's either you pray and make mess of Satan, or you don't pray it. and becomes a prey to Satan. Yes. Yeah, so it's either you pray and make mess of Satan, or you don't pray and become a prey. So prayer is one thing that makes you is something that keeps you from the reach of Satan. Satan can't get to anyone who can pray. Mm -hmm. Because when you begin to pray, you are operating from a realm, above his realm. Yeah, because the Bible says, for we are seated in heavenly places, far from the reach of Satan. Yes. And you see, in Colossians 3.3, 3, it says, for I am dead and hidden in Christ Jesus, and mm -hmm. Jesus in God. Mm -hmm. Which means when a man begins to pray, you now become like a dead man. Because to live in Christ, you must first die. Must so die. that you yes. will inculcate his own life. Like the, the like Apostle Paul says in, in Colossians, uh, uh, Galatians 2.20, it says, for the life I now live. Is no more my life. Exactly. It says the life of the Son of God who loved me and gave up. So for you to actually be untouchable, you have to be a man of prayer. <laughs> Yeah. That means I begin to understand why Job was untouchable. Exactly. Because I believe what kept Job in that I'm saying hidden from Satan is his rich prayer life, his rich encounter with Jesus Christ, is that hedge of fire which the devil himself had to confess. Yes. You know, it's still God actually had to point to the devil where Job was and before he was able to see where he Brother was. Chris, if you notice something, <laughs> when the Bible spoke about Job, the Bible told us that Job was a man mm -hmm. who even before his children sin, he will go and offer sacrifice in advance before they will. So that's to tell you how much Job prayed. It's like Job prayed ahead of time. It's like Job prayed and prayed extra. Yes. <laughs> that tells you that prayer is something you have to do always. The, the Bible says pray without season. First Thessalonians 5, 7. Yes. Pray without, at all times. Pray without season. In and out of season, you must be the person to pray. Let your environment not actually determine your prayer life, your prayer culture, your prayer time. They say confuse the devil with your prayer time. The devil don't even know when you are willing to pray or when you are going to pray. You can still just be moving and you are praying in the inside. You can still be in school and you are praying. At that job site, you are praying. Whatever activity you are doing, you should be meditating. You know, Brother Chris, when you just said something, the devil shouldn't know your prayer time. And you should. Now, many Christians have what we call time they pray. 
<laughs> yeah, some people pray when they wake up from sleep. Some people pray when they want to eat. Now, it is better to have a prayer life than a prayer time. You know, when you have a prayer time, the devil can actually calculate. You know, when you pray, you are on fire. Mm -hmm. When you stop praying, it's like your fire has gone down. So the devil yes. can actually know when to attack. Exactly. But when you now have a prayer life, it means your whole life you are praying. So there's no time you are cold. There's no time your prayer goes down. So the, de hot. the devil doesn't know when to attack mm -hmm. because you are on fire always because always. you pray always. So I will advise Christian, instead of having times you pray, have a prayer life. It means you pray at all times. Who says, encounters are real, sir. Only watchers have encounters. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory. What a rich topic. That means only those who see God, only those who watch, actually have the encounter. You see the, 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 the story of the virgins. You see, it was only those vigilant virgins who actually had to encounter the bride, the groom. Exactly. But those ones who were not vigilant the enough, foolish ones. the foolish ones actually did not actually encounter God in yeah. no time. So you see, it's only those who actually keep watch in prayer. Those persons who have actually dedicated themselves into a rich prayer life that actually have rich experiences, that actually know God the more. Yeah. Yes, and actually plunge deeper into the spirit realm. So you see, they say, do new things with Jesus. Yes, do new things. That's yes, do new things with, for Jesus. It, it's important. You cannot be a, a born again. You cannot be a child of God without doing new things for Jesus. Yes. Remember, he says, when you're born again, your old nature is gone. You become a new creation. Yes. Which means all uh, everything you do should be different from what you used to do before. Mm -hmm. As we have said, we're encouraging ourselves to pray. If you are that one who did not pray at first, you have to increase. You have to pray constantly. If you are that one who used to pray just once, twice, it's it, the call is coming now that you should pray without season you shouldn't have a timetable for praying you should have a prayer life mm -hmm. which means off your prayer altar in the house you should still be praying which means off your prayer time in the morning after bed you still you still need to be found praying mm -hmm. so it is important for us as a born again do everything new if you are that one who did not have the attitude of giving you should better start giving. That is it. You 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 need to inculcate new things. You need to welcome new attitude, new beliefs, new directions with the spirit. So um, uh, we have Endale Nalan who says prayer is a commandment. You ought to pray always. It's not a choice. Exactly. <laughs> she says it's not a choice. It's a commandment. Yeah. Yes, it's not a choice, it's a commandment. You see, the only way you get to encounter Jesus is in that place of prayer. You see, the, um, the, the Holy Spirit is um, um, a spirit. And uh, as a spirit, it's not like a normal flesh. It does not really have the flesh that we have where I can just say, okay, Brady Benoit, let's get to discuss and I'll just tap on you and we discuss. Mm -hmm. You need to actually go through some, let me say, direct and conscious ways to actually encounter the Holy Spirit, Pastor Remy. And then you see, we have Sister Violet. Huh? Sister Violet says, Indeed, the word of God is fire. And what that word is, and once that word is in you, the devil stays very far from you. Yes. We just need to guide the word preciously in our heart to always be on fire. Yes. That means you always need to guard that word in your heart. You need to keep it so deep in you that the devil shall by no means take it away from you. Let's get down to watch um, um, the, the video again. We get, get, get down to our second clip for the day, which actually has to present our mother in the house explaining to us seven, uh, well, seven points, but I did, but now five talking points, which actually we are still going to re-enter it again when we come on. So I like the comments that are coming in. Launch your, um, deeper into the things of Jesus by actually sharing this link, actually um, 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 uh, getting Con yourself involved into this program through your contributions. Exactly. Yes, share, let your friends also get um, um, in contact with your family members, actually get this rich knowledge that is oozing out from God's presence. This is the people with the word. So feel free, give to us your own contribution ask your questions ask your doubts give to us whatever it is you have as inspiration and we'll be right here to answer we'll be right back sit in there follow keenly what our mother has to say with this particular guideline she gave to us sacrifice to keep the commands of God that is we are saying go to any extreme to make sure that you keep the commands of God let God see what, how you are struggling to be with him. How you are struggling to defend his name. How you are struggling to meet him. How you are struggling to do his work. How you are struggling to fulfill the purpose for which he sent you on earth. We saw this great sacrifice even in the life of Abraham that we are looking up today as our icon. 
Abraham went to the extent of sacrificing his son. That God, if it means that I should sacrifice my son to be approved in your sight, let me sacrifice. Let the son go. And number two, do new things for the Lord. Do new things for the Lord each day. Remember, when you became born again or when you become born again, the old things go and the new comes. And so because you are born again, you have been redeemed from your old ways, do new, begin to do new things for the Lord. Keep the fire burning. Your old ways of praying without fasting, stop it. Begin to pray and fast. Your old ways of going to sleep without praying, stop it. Begin to pray before you go to sleep. You are always of going through the year without any retreat. Stop it. Begin to have retreats. Personal time with the Lord. Anything you were doing before his resurrection yesterday, stop it. Start doing new things. If you used to speak to yourself bad words, it is time to change your confession and start speaking positive words upon yourself. If you used to be that kind of person, we used to argue the word of God. It is time to start doing new things. And the fire on the altar shall be kept burning on it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order on it. And he shall burn on it the fat of the peace offerings. A fire shall always be burning on the altar it shall never go out. The fire must always be burning on the altar. It shall never go out. This is a commandment that was given to the children of Israel. Hallelujah. God instructed them through Moses that they should put, they should always keep the fire on the altar burning. They should never put it off. That is to say the command of God should always be burning in your life. Launch deeper into his command. Launch deeper. Obey it, observe it. Child of God, let it never quench. And number three, we say to keep your fire burning, pray regularly. Pray regularly. Pray without ceasing. Prayer helps you to stay in him. Through prayer, many people hear the word of God, hear his voice. Through prayer, many people have revelations. Through prayer, many people have visions. Through prayer, many people have encounters with the Lord. Pray regularly. When you pray regularly, you will discover you will not even have the thing, you, the things of this world will not even be on your mind anymore. You will discover that that fire, that burning fire will be in your heart. Number four, meditate on his word. Meditate on the word of God. Meditate is having personal time with God. You have the Bible in front of you, you have your daughter in front of you, you have your pen, you have your paper, and you are reading the word of God and writing down what the spirit of God is ministering to you. When you meditate on the word of God, you see the love of God in his word. You see the promises of God in his word. You see how the grace of God is working in your life. And in his law, he meditates day and night. His delight is in the law of the Lord. Your fire is in the law of the Lord. That fire that you want to burn is in the law of the Lord. That meditation is in that book, in that Bible. The fire that you want, get it from there. It is not from moving from one man of God to another, one prophet to another, one grace to another. Get it in partition left and right. That is not it. It is in the law of the Lord. Those who have those higher graces, they got it from the law of the Lord. It is their meditation, their personal time with the Lord. That is how they grew in the Lord. Number five, work with those who are constantly on fire. If you desire the fire, work with those who are. If you must be on fire, work with those who are constantly on fire. If you want to love the commands of the Lord and serve him with joy.
by actually, first of all, handing all your life, surrendering everything to Jesus, make sure that you are, are a born again. Second of all, you need to meditate on his word day and night. Let that word, I mean, be part of you. You eat the word of God. You make sure that you are actually that one who actually cannot go a day, a night, a minute, a second without actually reading something from the scriptures. You need to search the scriptures because, Pastor Remy, everything, every answer, every question, every topic we see in these last days are actually found in the Bible. Yeah. Yes, every answer. Yeah, you are you are right because you see in, in our days today, the days we live in, we have a lot of problems out there, and people are turning left and right. Some are even going to wish doctors in search of solution. The truth is, everything on earth, everything we are seeing today, came from the word of God, the spoken word of God. Yes. So if you actually have a problem today, go back to that word, mm -hmm. and in the word you will find all. The solutions to your problem. Yes. The truth is just that many people who go to church today, I will not even want to call them born again because not everybody in church is born again. Many who go to church today, even some born again and believers, they don't still believe in the word of God, mm. which is where we are lacking. Yes, and you see the very uh, very striking point is that you must pray without ceasing. I use the word must. That means as a child of God, you need to have a rich prayer life. You are not supposed to be dry of an encounter, dry of a prayer life. You see, Pastor Remy, it just starts by you reducing two minutes from your prayer time before you realize it is two hours, before you realize it you are going days, you're weeks, off. months, and you're exactly. off. That is it. So, I think um, a prayer life is like a culture. It's something you need to actually cultivate, something you have to actually build and invest in. The yes. same way you have that consciousness that you need to eat, mm -hmm. it's the same way you should have that consciousness that you need to, you need to pray. Mm -hmm. You should have the hunger to want to read the word of God and to want to pray. Mm -hmm. It is, it is it is we say uh, 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 the, the the word of god is food for our spirit yes the way we feed the physical body is the same way we feed the body the word of god the word of god and we cannot pray without the word of god that's true if you have to pray consistently it means you need to read the word of god constantly yes you know actually this issue of prayer even most often many believers they they are lacking <coughs> because they've not understood now you should live a life whereby when you've not prayed, that is when it is you are is you you become conscious that hey something I have not not that you are being conscious that I did not no it is therefore all your life is prayer to the extent that it is if you you didn't pray at a certain time then something rings a bell I remember back then in the universities when I was going to school with my my friend my brother while we were going, I was telling him that morning I said. I feel like something is lacking in me. I'm lacking. It's like I forgot something at home. <coughs> then while I was pondering in my mind, the Holy Ghost reminded me that today you didn't pray for up to two hours. Because then, every morning before we go to school, I pray for a minimum of two hours. But that day we, I don't know what happened, whether we wake up late or something, I pray for just an hour. So now going to school, I began sensing my body was like part of me was not with me. Why? I didn't fulfill my hours of prayer. So that's how, as Christians, that's how we ought to be. And like Brother Benoit said, you know, the power to pray, or because many people, many Christians, they, if, if you now talk of praying for two hours, some say like, oh, me, mm -hmm. the word of God is the evidence spice you need for prayer. So long as you are filled with the word of God, you can never be short of words in prayer. You will, you will be <coughs> short of time to pray, not words to speak. Indeed. Because the word of God, you know, each word, each word is a door. Each, each word is a door whereby as you launch into it, it opens you to another realm where there are abundance of words you can speak. So we must also be mindful of the word of God when we want to set ourselves on fire. Yes. And you see all the persons starting from our Father Jesus to many tremendous men of God in the Bible. You see that um, um, the prayer attitude they inculcated actually gave to them supernatural experiences. Exactly. Yes, that was it. In, um, in science and wonders we saw it. Our Father Jesus Christ spent all his time praying. And by so doing, he gained time. You see, even most persons think that... Um, um, uh, Prayer is a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Yes, most persons, most Christian things are okay. If I'm put into us into prayers, then I'm just actually wasting my time. Mm -hmm. I can just sit in the confines of my bedroom and just give a 30 minutes prayer and say, "Oh God, bless me for this day and hand over everything." No, I believe that is a very wrong. It's um, a mistake. It's a wrong mistake we are making. See, our mother spoke of sacrifice. 
if you want to keep that fire in you, you must actually have the attitude, the character of a person who sacrifices. And that sacrifice can actually be material, it can actually be time, it can actually be physical, mental, everything about you must be able to lay it down so as to gain that fire. You see, she made the example of a native doctor. You cannot go and take from a native doctor without having to sacrifice. You see, our father is a spirit, a superior spirit to all. And likewise, you need to offer something in order to gain something from him. So you need to offer your time. You need to offer your money. You need to offer everything about you. You need to offer, even at times, you need to offer your own joy. Exactly. Yes, you need to all, uh, you need to offer your own happiness exactly. in order to receive from Jesus. Pastor Redmi, you know sacrifice is something a child of God is supposed to actually plunge and dig deep into. Yeah, actually I really love uh, the example uh, the the mother of the house used the, the, the witch doctor. You know because this thing of sacrifice and giving in church it is becoming alarming it's appalling because now even christians believers they begin to judge and begin to speak it is just so amazing that it is even believers who talk more and encourage the unbelievers to talk now when you go to witch doctors there is no witch some witch doctors just by coming at their shrine not entering at the door of the shrine you drop something before you enter when you enter before maybe they talk you drop something after they do you drop something now people don't complain it is only in church where you see I even believers complaining if they talk about giving offering maybe two three times but you see we are not even talking about offering here we are talking about sacrifice and talking about sacrifice when from the old testament i love what solomon did mm. solomon gave a burnt offering sacrifice is a principle a principle that cannot be broken sacrifice is something that it doesn't matter who performs or who does it. Whoever does it gets the result. Yes. It's not just a believer. Even an unbeliever, if an unbeliever does sacrifice, the unbeliever gets the result. Sacrifice is very important. Uh, Abraham as well, our father, he did sacrifice Isaac. Exactly. God promised Abraham a son. But even in that promise, God didn't tell Abraham that you are going to be father of many nations. It is when Abraham sacrificed that only son, God said, God had to swear. It is sacrifice that caused God to actually swear in his name. So there is one power behind sacrifice. It cannot be explained. It can move the hand of God. Sacrifice, do you know, even in 2 Kings chapter 3 from verse 21, you see the king of Moab sacrificing his eldest son. And the Bible says it had to turn the hand of God against God's own people, Israel. And what God had declared by his prophet Elijah, Elisha could not come to pass. God told them he was going to, they were going, Israel was going to win the war. But when the king sacrificed his son, the Bible says there was a great indignation against God. The Bible, is this same Bible says, who can be against the Lord? No one. No one. There's song, who, who can be against him? But this time around, we saw how the power of sacrifice will make God turn against his own self. Because they say, the Bible says there was a great indignation against Israel. And Israel fled from the war. So I think sacrifice is one spice in Christianity you can't do without. Mm. Yes, you can't do without sacrifice. That means you actually need to surrender and hand everything on to Jesus. Jesus Christ said, I need, th I need this car from you. You need to do it without reservation. Okay. I need your time. I need your money. I need this. You just need to just hand it over to God in order to obtain results. Brady Benoit, even God himself actually had to sacrifice his own son to prove to us that he loves us. Exactly. And Brother Chris, it is very important for us to make the difference between giving and sacrifice because many Christians will tell you I've been sacrificing but if you want to look at it critically they have been giving they have not been sacrificing oh, well, and that is where they miss the point because just imagine you 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 let's look at the widow's mind mm -hmm. everyone was giving but our father said this one has given the this one has sacrificed because she has given all what she depended on okay let's look at our father look at God Almighty God has been giving to creation he had been giving everything we wanted, but it came to a point where he had to sacrifice. He himself did sacrifice. He sacrificed his only son for us. So we should be able to know what we had, what we call sacrifice and what we call giving. giving. Exactly. And the, 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 the Bible tells us, our Father Jesus said, if you want to follow him, you need to abandon your soul. You need to carry your own cross. Which means one way to sacrifice is to kill the flesh. Yes. You know, Brother D. Benoit, not to cut you short, 
to just make it so clear the difference between giving and sacrifice is remember the widows my jesus christ said something mm -hmm. he says the widow gave all that her life depended mm -hmm. on now giving is giving it is actually donating part of your abundance it means for example if you have ten thousand francs and you and, and you give 500 francs it's not a sacrifice mm -hmm. that's giving if you have a hundred thousand francs and you give even eighty thousand it's still not a sacrifice because there is still part left jesus said the woman gave all that her life depended on that's now sacrifice that's why god gave god doesn't have two then god didn't have two sons now god has many sons because because of the the, the, cross. the cross now we are also, sons, also of sons of god but then in the in the days of old god had one and he gave the one that is sacrifice abraham had isaac and he gave that sacrifice is giving <coughs> all giving all not just giving portion when you give portion it's giving sacrifice is giving what your life depends on that's why the king of moab the bible says the bible had to for the bible to say he gave the eldest is to tell you there was a younger mm -hmm. and the eldest symbolizes the future king in other words the king had to render the upcoming generation kingless so he gave the elders who were supposed to take over from him and giving that means you are rendering the upcoming generation kingless because when you die the one who ought to take over you have sacrificed him what a sacrifice that you render a whole generation kingless so when we, look, when we look at our generation now we will look at the church today can we say we have been sacrificing but see benoit you uh, see in this point, in particular point you get to realize when you see some christians come to church just on service days the question is who cleans that auditorium who cleans that hall you come out and sit on who does the cheers who actually make sure that the decors the lights are the way they are they don't they don't bother about that they don't sac they don't actually have to sacrifice their time they think that okay that time is meant just to um, pay the business side and come on you know many persons think that um, attending service is sacrifice right? exactly they think they're sacrificing their time by attending exactly. service but is that really what it is not at all not at all i think we really need to sit up because of time we these are things we can take even like topic on a day to teach because sacrifice is something you you need to have a deep understanding about sacrifice, about sacrifice. and in all sacrifice is that one that hurts yes is that thing that you give that actually pains you that means you feel from the inside that oh god mm -hmm. this i'm doing for you is because i want this particular result and yes brother chris and this program we might have a part two on saturday <laughs> by the look of things the, we, we are speaking deep things here we are speaking things that are very important we'll not have to rush it we'll not because have to the rush viewers it. need to receive receive this you mm -hmm. need to digest it and many need to change come all right honestly well, let's get down to the next point which is witnessing for jesus yes you need to witness for jesus that means you actually need to be you you, you need to identify yourself with god that means when person see you let they see the reflection the countenance of jesus let everyone around you hear about jesus everyone should hear about jesus wherever you find yourself mm -hmm. you should witness what, what does it mean you should testify of his goodness Good. you know it's amazing nowadays many believers are out for miracles but after the miracles they're not out for testimonies i tell you the truth because you see we are talking about keeping the fire burning so one mm. of the ways you will keep the fire is witness and know this you can't witness without the fire the fire that's, that's why it. jesus himself in acts chapter one he told the disciple acts one four the bible says he gave them the commandment that they should not leave they should not leave unless they receive until they receive and in acts chapter 2 the bible talks of pentecost day acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 he says and the holy ghost came upon us <coughs> in tongues and we could see that from there peter who was timid came out and became bold and the next thing we heard people who carry fire the next thing we heard down from acts chapter 2 down to, i think verse 31 it says 3,000 was added and from there if you go to acts chapter 4 verse 4 it says 5,000 if you go to acts chapter 13 it says and almost the whole city came out because men who carry fire do you know one thing about fire fire is attractive mm -hmm. fire calls for attention so mm -hmm. when you are on fire people will always come to where you are i think you're right because i believe moses was seated then he looked at far up and like what's that light oh, and that he mountain? turned towards it and walked yes. to it fire calls for attention mm -hmm. you can't resist fire as we are sitting here now if we hear noise that it's fire we must leave this place yes it is. so <laughs> you have to be on fire to attract people to witness uh, to people God. to win souls so to win souls you must carry that fire you must 
carry that fire. Yeah. And the last point we're going to look is the kind of company you keep. If you want to be on fire, you need to be among the persons that contain that fire. So that even if your fire wants to quench, they are going to light you. Obviously, as iron sharpens iron, so one man ought to sharpen another. Yeah, you know, the Bible says in Psalms 1 verse 1, it says, mm. Blessed is he that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor seated on the seat of the scoffers. So it's, this tells you that what it tells you that your, your company has a lot to play in your fire to continually burn. Yes. Because when you have the wrong company, they put out the fire. They put out the fire. Just like Brother Benoit was saying that the three uh, fireside stone, when you put wood which is not dry, wood which which is not of the same caliber, not of the same company. Exactly. Therefore, you take a dry wood and a wet wood and you bring it together. The wet wood will put out the yes, fire. Yes, yes. But when you put com uh, every wood there was actually dry wood, you see that the fire will be enormous. Now you come to see that as Christians nowadays, even in the church, you must know who you walk with. Exactly. Because don't forget Job 1 verses, the Bible says, when the sons of God were gathered, it says the devil was in their midst. So even in the church, you must know who to choose to walk with because they are actually devils in the church. Yes. You know, sometimes when we say these people are like, uh, how, what, what would the devil... Listen, if there was no devil in the church, then there would be no casting out of devils. That yeah. is it. So if the devil is not in the church, you will not be seeing sickness. It means as people come, their sickness should be dropped outside. But but if, it, if they enter the church, still see the devil is in the church. So you must know your company. Choose the right company. Because by association, Peter was a fisherman. The John was, uh, uh, I think, also a fisherman. But look at who did they join themselves with? Jesus Christ. And what did they become? They became little Christ. So company, association is very important in keeping your fire burning. That is it. So we'll look at our society today. We'll look at the youth. We'll look at the... Uh, the young believers nowadays, what can we say? What is the problem that makes the fire not burn? I think it's the kind of company they keep. You cannot have an association of scammers and you want to burn. I mean, you are going to burn many things of Satan. You are going to, you are going to <laughs> keep burning in that scamming. You cannot have prostitutes by you, negative influence by you, and you want to burn for Jesus. It's not really possible. They say no me. Christianity is in their heart. I mean, I don't understand. What do you mean by Christianity in the, is in their heart? I mean, the worldly people do, is their worldliness in their heart. When you step out in the street, you can see them dressing half naked. You can see them drinking in the street, beer, even in their car. So I don't understand how us Christians, our Christianity is in our heart. The Bible says, let your light so shine. How? Is it shining from your heart? It's not shining within. It should shine outwardly. For everyone to see. Yeah, you, you can't keep your Christianity. Now, if you look at something, the Bible says in Acts chapter 4, I think from verse... 20 downward. It was talking about how the apostles were beaten and asked not to preach in the name of Christ. Yes. And the Bible says they went to their own company. And when they met in their company, what happened? We heard that they Prayer. began to pray. And what happened? The Bible says the place where they were gathered was shaken. And they were imparted the more. Now, your company in our world today, you see many Christians. They leave church on Sunday. Where do they go to? Jangi houses. They go to Jangi houses. Our, our, our Christians today, when they leave, in fact, before they say amen, some people, they have disappeared. And you ask, <laughs> where are they going to? You hear some people they say, they uh, meetings. You hear some, especially the ladies. I mean, no, I don't want to associate myself. You know, I, I just want to avoid, I don't want to be a problem. Who are they associated? As they avoid their brethren in church, as they avoid those who are burning with fire, who do they associate with? They are associating now with others who don't carry this fire. So you see a Christian after church is with someone who was in the club last night what would they discuss, discuss. <laughs> it's so amazing and so, so sad. you have to join yourself to your fellow brother mm -hmm. I remember a brother gave me a testimony one day I visited him just by visiting him we just chatted we didn't pray I didn't pray nothing just chatted and when I left his room that night he had an encounter and in that encounter he said when he woke up he was like what happened today? He said, the Holy Spirit said to him, did you know who just visited? He texted me and said, hey, Pastor Remy, you carry something. Just, carry by, fire. Yeah, just by associating. You see that some people, they don't need to pray. You know, when you go to where the meal, palm oil, mm -hmm. look, you don't need to walk. Just stay by that factory. Before you leave there, you will see that stain of 
palm oil on you. Yes. So just by associating with people who carry fire, before you know it, you, that fire is contagious. You will carry the fire as well. And the same like someone can walk into your room and you leave the, the, the night, the, the, the same night you start having battles. You start having nightmares. You start, you start, you start, they start pushing you in the night mm -hmm. because of what the person like him has no fire. That is it. He has a negative force. You see, even before Jesus Christ had to actually have his um, um, disciples with him, when at age 12, when they came to look for him in the temple, you see, he was associating himself with the right company, persons to feed him with more wisdom and everything he needed. So, uh, uh, the church of today, I don't understand why. Christians will not want to associate themselves with their fellow brothers in the church, with those who are on fire. In fact, some people, I remember back in our days, when I, I, I was still, before I became a pastor, I was still just a leader in the church. When they tell people, oh, you, you know, Pastor uh, Brother Remy, some people are afraid. Some, some girls said this to me, say, hey, I pity the girl who will marry you because all your life is prayer, prayer, prayer. prayer so, prayer. you can imagine what a believer is saying. I mean, what kind of a believer are we turning into? You are now running away from somebody because he prays. Instead of you to run towards such a person because you actually you will contact that Embrace fire. that fire. It's really a pity. <laughs> we need to change as believers. Let's rise up. Let's associate with the right company. Let's rise up. Let's cling to the people who contain, who, who, who are carriers of fire so that we ourselves can contain this fire and carry it to the world. <laughs> So the next question is, why is Pastor Remy actually emphasizing with all the veins on his neck talking about the aspect of keeping your fire burning? So that is it now, viewers, why should you keep your fire burning? We are living the last days. And unless you have that fire in you, you can never succeed. Yes. So the first point in Baradi Benoit is this, that once you keep the fire in you, let's talk about victory. You see, you, you have endless victory as a child of God. Once you have fire in you, the devil can by no means snatch anything of yours. Once you have the fire of God in you, you will forever remain victorious. Yes, brother Chris, I'll just take one, one simple example. Mm -hmm. The three Hebrew brothers, yes. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were victorious at the end of the day. After all the plots to kill them, they went into the burning furnace and they came out victorious. Mm -hmm. Why did they come out victorious? Because they were carrying fire. Why was Daniel able to go into the lion den and the lion had to shut his mouth? Because he was carrying fire. Yes. It is the fire that was burning around him. The fire that was burning in him that will make the lions to like, I cannot go close to this one. <laughs> I cannot go close to this one. So everything, you, that one who carries fire, everything you lay your hands on. Because what have we said? To carry fire must be a child of God. Yes. You must have encountered Christ. You mm -hmm. must have the Holy Ghost in you. To, 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 to carry fire means you are surrounded by those who carry fire. Which means your prayer life is, cons is constant. You are constantly meditating on the word of God. There is nothing on earth that you will lay your hands on and you will not prosper. Indeed. And this world is more of spiritual than physical. Exactly. If you see the men who strive physically, do check their prayer life. You know, exactly. Check those people who are actually taking their time to cook themselves in the secret place. They are going to understand the source of their power. Exactly. Many persons think it's just um, um, uh, when they see the man of God manifesting in dimensions and directions, it's just at that particular time where the Holy Spirit is feeling no. Mm -hmm. That man did not sleep last night. That man actually had that experience he, way he, before that. He had been keeping his fire actively burning and increasingly burning by day by night so if you want to have victory over that fire brought victory over your the, 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 the witches and wizards that pursue you at night if you want to have victory over all your problems all the closed doors you need to have fire in you because so long as you have fire in you you are going to forever remain the winning side they say no one lights a lamp and keeps it under the table we are the shining light of jesus christ and as the shining light of jesus christ we are on the mountain i mean where we stand we are always at the top and you see so, Brother Chris, the mm -hmm. Bible says our God, God is a consuming fire. It's a consuming fire. So if we have received this fire, means we are also consuming fire. We are also consuming fire. Anything that comes around us negative, we are going to consume it. Yes. Is it that fire, but the fire with you will consume it? Mm -hmm. Is it that habitation, the fire in you is going to consume it? Whatever the disease, whatever the name they call it, once you keep your fire burning, once that fire is in you, it's going to consume it. Yes, you're going to always have victory. Exactly. You see, the, the, David before the Goliath, you see, what gave him victory? was the confession he had to make you see the same god who actually helped me in the time of the bears the lions and everything will give to me your head you see only somebody who actually has confidence and stamina in the spirit can actually give us confession and then this leads me to, the, uh, to our next point which actually i jotted it down it says you'll be free from attacks you see if you like the candle here but i tell you put your hand on that flame 
<laughs> you are going to actually resist. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, you are actually going to resist because actually once you touch it, there's that sensation. That, and it's the same thing likewise. The devil cannot come and approach you when you are burning. You know, when you burn, when you burn, you are untouchable. Mm. I have a lot of testimonies with regards to that. You know, even Job, the devil went to God and was like, he had conquered the world. And God told him, have you seen my servant Job? And the devil told God, he said, have you not put a hedge of, of fire? fire so you it. see, even the devil tested, I can't hear anyone that carries fire. Yes. I remember back then in Yaoundé, uh, in my quarter where I was living, one, I never knew this man was an occultist. He was just living opposite my hostel. And one day he came out and he met me. He was like, keep praying. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> my roommate never knew. I always, I pray up there. It was my prayer altar. We were living in an uncompleted story building. So I go up there to pray. How did my roommate who sleeps with me for almost eight months never knew? But this man said, keep praying. Then he, he said to me, Chata shan scale the sent the spiller for a whole lava. See no, which means what? He had there, he had temper to come there, but the Holy the Ghost, the fire was too much. Oh, yes. So if you are a man on fire, I tell you, you are untouchable. Yes. You are preserved. The enemy cannot touch you. Mesape Javis, we thank you so much for being part of this program. Braddon Tanyinze, we thank you very much for being part of this program. Vera Kimi says, oh yeah, fire attracts. It causes attention much on pastor. So I thank you all for being part of this program. We are wrapping up. We are wrapping up. And uh, the, our, our last talking point for the day is the point that, you know, why you must be on fire is such that you live in the presence of God at all times. Oh, yes. Yes, you will be in the presence of God at all times. That means you attract even the presence of God. You know, mm -hmm. in, uh, in Hebrews, like I gave it, Hebrews 12, 29, God says, I am a consuming fire. Yes. Now, how do you dwell in fire if you are you not fire? fire? That is why the three Hebrew guys, when the Nebuchadnezzar ordered that the furnace should be heated seven times hotter, if you notice, the Bible says the people who took the three Hebrew guys, they didn't enter the fire just at the entrance. They were consumed. Yeah. This is to tell you, even in the presence, now notice, the fourth man was in the fire. Mm -hmm. The fourth man was, which, for the, was already there. Which signifies God in the fire. Yes. Now, how come God is in the fire? That same fire consumed some people who didn't even enter. This tells you that. You can enter the presence of God and yet you will die. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us in the New Testament, Peter, Ananias and Sapphira, when they lied, what happened? They died. So as a child, you, you may be a child of God, but if you don't carry this fire, that's why in Hebrews 1, 7, he says, I met my angels and I called the ministering spirit, but my servants, they are flame of fire. Exactly. Because I am a consuming fire. If you are not fire, I will consume you. So as a child of God, you ought to be fire. Yes. So that you, when Enjoy you enter his, his presence, presence, you can be consumed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is necessary that you become fire yourself so that you can enjoy his prayer and you can entertain fire when you pour a cup of water inside a river does that cup of water come can you even separate it you, can. you don't even know what you poured inside because water is water so because we are christians and we are sons of god we are fire that's why we enter his presence no did you notice that when jesus was had to be betrayed by judas look the the 12 had been with jesus until they all had become like him that's why judas remember jesus had been with these people preaching how come they didn't know him it had to take a kiss from judas to identify this is the one why because even the disciples they had inculcated themselves with jesus and they had been Come like Jesus. So when you look at Jesus and you look at Peter, they look alike. So fire is fire. Jesus is fire. Peter is fire. So if the Father is fire, we are fire. So we have to become flames of fire in order to dwell in his presence. That is it. So if you want to live in the presence of God, if you want to have a rich spiritual life full of encounters, you need to be sure you are burning. You need to be sure you have that fire ignited and you never quenching. So are you the one who has lost his or her fire? Are you the one who has reduced his or her prayer life? Are you the one who has actually stayed away from the presence of God and you want to return? But remember, this is the people with the word and we are not yet to condemn any person. We are actually yet to point you to the 
right direction to tell you that okay brother okay sister this is a lot calling out to you here today to actually get to refocus and redirect and reignite that fire he gave to you he cannot send you here on earth to suffer he did not send you here on earth to actually perish by the devil and every other thing in as much as he has sent you here on earth he has given to you all what it takes to overcome so this is the time this is the season for you to actually surrender your all to jesus we are going to relate to you the altar call and you know we serve a god who is not bound by time who is not bound by space he is everywhere at any time so don't do that this altar call was made on sunday and because of that it's no longer effective it is super effective right now so this is the time for you to hand over your heart this is the time for you to hand over your soul cry out to god father reignite my fire you see it comes with tremendous um, 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 benefits if you're actually the one who is on fire you have victory you are free from attacks you can always sit and confess the good news the goodness of god pastor remy have you any word of encouragement to our viewers so that they can get to open their hearts to actually receive god and reignite their fire well actually viewers all over the world i want to tell you that it's never too late with god it's never too late there is god created time so he can pause time it doesn't matter how long your fire might have been put off it doesn't matter how old you are maybe you had not received this fire before the time is right now mm -hmm. remember the chariot of Ahab had gone far ahead of uh, uh, Elijah but the Bible says when the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah in the place of prayer which is the place of fire he says Elijah outran the chariot of Ahab remember the disciples of Jesus Christ they actually left Jesus Christ 12 hours and went ahead but when Jesus finished praying the Bible says they saw him walking upon the waters it means that your friends might be married things may not be working out for you, you may not have a job now don't think you are too late don't think you're behind it begins the first step is receiving Christ Jesus the first step is igniting revitalize again your fire so that you can do what catch up with them and overtake them so as the outer call will be played on the screen I ask you if you've not surrender your life to Christ Jesus surrender your life to him now if your fire had gone down it is time to pray with the outer call so that your fire can be reignited again okay so you just watch and pray along child of god i don't know how much fire is burning in you i don't know if fire is burning at all or that fire had quenched some years, some days, some weeks ago. But it is time to reconsider your relationship with Christ. This is a time to re reconsider your relationship with Christ. Examine the fire that is burning in you. Is it that fire that the Lord can approve? Is it that fire that can freeze that can bring the presence of God around you is it a fire that can make you free from attacks is it that fire that can give you victory this is the time to run to the altar and make amends with the Lord maybe what you have been going through is because that fire was lacking Maybe what you have been going through is because that fire is not enough. And why was it not enough? Maybe your sacrifices for the kingdom was not enough. Maybe you have not been doing extraordinary things for the kingdom of God. Maybe your prayer life has not been strong. Run to the altar of God. Maybe your fasting life has not been strong. Run to the altar of God. Maybe your time for meditation is weak. It's not enough. Run to the altar of God. Maybe the people around you are not those ones that sharpens you with the things of the Lord. It is time. God is calling you. God is calling you. He wants to sharpen you. He wants to sharpen you. Maybe you have not been witnessing. Or the souls you are winning. The number you have won so far is not enough. God is saying it's not enough. My child, 
I want to use you even more. Run to the altar of God. Or maybe you are not yet born again. So you are not experiencing this fire. Run to the altar of God. Run to the altar of God. You are blessed as you come. things are happening in our lives because the fire has been quenched. The fire has been quenched because of one thing or the other. Remember when you became born again, the day you accepted Christ. Think of that fire, that desire that was in your heart. Do you see have it right now? Oh, you are discouraged. Oh, you have given up. As you are standing right there, be telling him. You know the area you are filled. And you know the areas you want God to touch. Talk to him. There are many of us that God wants to use. There are many areas of our lives that God wants to touch. But the fire is not there. The sacrifice is not there. The time for meditation is not there. The prayer line is there. You have not yet given your life to Christ. You don't have a strong relationship with him. He doesn't know you. Your friends are still the ones of the world. Pray, tell him, talk to God. Where 
where you have been missing it, where you have been failing in this kingdom work, tell him. Tell him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for pulling your children. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for pulling them. Thank you for taking them, oh Lord Jesus, from that position. Thank you for shifting them. Thank you for pushing them, oh King of glory. Pushing them, oh God, to move forward. To move forward. To stay in you, to grow in grace. To grow in your love, to grow in your works, and not to be stagnant. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, O Lord. Wave, put, lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Tell the Lord that I surrender. Say, Lord, I surrender. I surrender my life. I surrender my life for your service. I surrender my life to obey your command. I surrender my life to do your work. I surrender my heart to you, O oh Lord. That my heart will focus only on the things above and not only on things on this earth. That I serve you the rest of my life. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe you came and died for me. I believe, Lord. And I believe I'll be redeemed by your blood. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For now I know I'm a new person in Christ. That the old things have gone and the new me has come. My name has been changed. I am now called a child of God. I am now called your own. Thank you, great God. Thank you, great God. In the name of Jesus, we are prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. standard of your life. God's word is extremely important. Obey it and be preserved. Obey it and continue to have a wonderful fellowship with him. Always remember that Jesus loves you. Always remember that he has never abandoned you and he will never abandon you. All you need is the fire of God to continue to burn in you. Sacrifice more for the kingdom of God. Pray more. Meditate on his word more. Be with people who talk about Christ more. Defend the God you serve. His grace is sufficient for you. Amen. Number five. Work with those who are constantly on fire. If you desire the fire, work with those who are. If you must be on fire, work with those who are constantly on fire. If you want to love the commands of the Lord and serve him with joy, Work with those who are constantly on fire. We draw the curtains of today's edition of the program, The People with the Word, broadcasting live from EPN Studio. Congratulations, I just have to say to you all who actually follow the altar call out the end, follow this program from start to end, and uh, it's always been a wonderful session with you guys. Uh, from the contributions, it's been tremendous. And I just believe that I've, God has ignited that fire in you. Nothing, absolutely nothing is going to quench it. Pastor Remy, we have come to the end of this program. What has What is going to be your word of advice to the viewers out there? Well, I want to advise all the viewers, especially those who receive Christ through the altar call, and for those who they have reignited their fire again, keep it burning. Get the right, the right company. Associate yourself with the right company. 
and trust me you are going to enjoy your life in Christ Jesus. Ready Benoa, how are you to say? Yes my brother my sisters if there is one thing we need to do in these last days is to keep our fire burning. Mm -hmm. Nothing should stop you, nothing should quench your fire. Keep your fire burning and heaven at last will be your name. And heaven at last will be your name. Uh, God willing we are going to be here again on Saturday but make it a date to be part of uh, our, our live programs broadcasting live from EPN studio we have the people with the word we have your focus we have your health we have God can do it again blessed to bless and what have you wonderful programs coming here from this studio just to help you grow your spiritual life this is EPN kingdom home and it's our vision that we make heaven at last with every person till we meet again we say shalom I am Chris Kofi Mokosa and till we meet again we say may the peace of the Lord continue to be with you and dwell in your household forever ever and ever. Amen. Amen.